Right, this is a team effort with no big stars. And what we have to be is enthusiastic amateurs reaching high standards of professionalism. That's my observation. Yeah, well, I concur with you on that one, and that's what we'll do. For about five years, Brian has opened the show every single week. Yes, near enough. Oh, about a couple, it. yes. So, tonight he's going to finish tonight. So, you're going to do one. And it's Brian, anyway, yes. High heel shoes and Mr. Big. What's this about? Somebody who's five feet four who had an obsession about his height. Mr. Big was five feet four. Mr. Big had the blues. If only he had some built up shoes with a 14 inch lift in a six foot six. He saved up his money and sent off for a pair that would lift him right up in the air to his full height of six feet six. Six feet six, Mr. Big, spelt B-I-double-G. Oblivious to the remarks of one who mocks revelations when he opened up the box. Ooh, joy of joys! He could be taller than the other boys. He could be taller than the other boys. Beyond the Mersey Light, losers with £50,000 number plate. I know exactly what you mean. I'm thumbing a ride near the Mersey Lights In the hot rain with my soggy sign My sodden smile Dinner on the table, salesman pass me by And all the smug losers with no life Who the hell am I? For long I wait and contemplate Late. Then out of the blue someone pulls up My boredom ends with a hit Like a sudden wicket Thanks so much, you're a star Where are you going, how far? I hope it's going to be something else To quote the words of Eddie Cochran That'll suit me fine See the thing is If you get a third album does well the first and second will, will start doing better. You know what I mean? You've only got to sort of capture the imagination of the buying public. Yeah, yeah, I, I and agree. And they will start to sort of tune into your lyrics and your way of doing things. But thank you all very much. I'm very grateful. I've thoroughly enjoyed this evening in my quiet sort of way. <laughs> right, so fresh. Now we've got the beat going, there's a chorus to this, or a refrain at the end of each verse, which is You better mind, you better mind You may lose that woman you love any old time Well, I heard a lot of talk about love, they the same You pay no heat, they don't mean a thing
Bradshaw. You heard me right the first time. Name of bachelor, Johnny Cool. <coughs> Occupation, Big Shot. Occupation at the moment, just having fun. What a party that was. The drinks were loaded, and so were the dolls. I narrowed my eyes and put a stiff Manhattan. Then I saw Hotsey. What a dame, a big, bountiful babe in the region of 48, 23, 38. One hell of a region. She had the hottest lips since Hiroshima. I had to stand back for fear of being burned. Whiskey, wow, wow, I breathe. What I used to do on stage was, I had never done that since primary school. But what I did have was my solicitor's managing clerk training whereby I'd go in front of a district judge and have to address him about a client's case. So I was used to thinking on my feet yeah. and speaking off the cuff. Mm. And that helped me go on stage at the folk club, just sort of listen to the noise I was making with my voice, listen to the noise I was making with my instrument, projecting myself to the back of the room and just doing my very best and waiting for the audience reaction. And that seemed to carry me through. You can slap the ass of that bar on, right? All right. <laughs> Staff self-respect, he did not give a hoot How immaculate he looked in a bespoke tailored suit Five feet four, his manners were poor His corporate car with the logo on the door A nasty little man and a tired old hag And a great big shiny flashy jag His corporate profile was obscene in the company's glossy Technicolor magazine Corporate baby! Dig those images Corporate baby! Dig those images Dig those images Corporate baby! Dig those images He was so keen and his music was mean he rode on past a lonely grey stone kirk. He played the Bowron and his name was Dirk. He was the top percussionist they had ever seen, and on his drum was the name Moonbeam. He played the Bowron and his name was Dirk. He was the top percussionist they'd ever seen. And on his drum was the name Moonbeam. <laughs>
somebody stole my teddy boy shoes. Have you heard I've got the blue? Somebody stole my teddy boy shoes. Put an advert in the news. Reward is offered for the return of my shoes. Call in Sherlock Holmes to look for clues. Oh, no, sorry. Colleagues on a boy Beloy stole the shoes of the teddy boy. And every person does not despair. Buys himself another pair. From a charity shop does not cost a packet. With that rather distinctive waistcoat jacket. What would Wallace and Mr. Simpson have said? What would they have said? Anyway, it goes like that. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of a hooky kind of... It's called the Edward Person. The Edward Person is what you would call a caddy boy if you were being PC, politically correct. Casually flicked open. A cigarette packet. the hoi polloi would refer to him as a teddy boy. A finishing touch, oh my, oh my, a rather nice boot lace tie. He didn't drink all those fancy liquors, stood around in his winkle pickers. The Edwards person the Edwards person The Edwards person Teddy boy visiting the Royal Northern College of Music on Oxford Road, Manchester 1. RNCM erstwhile visitor. Note the jacket, it cost a packet so Edwardly. Fancy guitar lickers and swimming pickers so Edwardly. Knowing right from wrong his Teddy boy song so Edwardly, so Edwardly, so Edwardly, so Edwardly. So Edwardly. Fancy 
she cries. At the concert hall, they played a latest rendition. So then off to the Brodsky suite. He knows the beat. So In the original comic strip, Chung was a sort of thuggish tribesman with a battered cricket bat and he used to crack many skulls with his cricket bat and he said, oh lord, a boundary, I have clack, clack many skulls with my clicky bat. So it was like Pigeon English from Chung. And I once suggested to a Link House publication magazine that they should relaunch it with Chung as a distinguished intellectual and calling the Wolf of Kabul an imperialist dog and the Wolf of Kabul had to wear a crash helmet to protect, protect his bonch from a blow from the cricket bat from Chung. Right, so um, Chung was um, the Wolf of Kabul's sidekick, sidekick then. Yes. And like then the bodyguard. Wolf of Kabul was like a... Special agent was he on the, yes, on the north? Yes, he used to dress up as a native. A boundary, oh lord, the legend of Chum. Smiting heads with a tricky bar, so bold, fours and sixes battle wood from days of old. Ineffectual Chung these days is a distinguished intellectual. His native intelligence has not been dulled, and the tricky bar still clacks many skulls. If we can involve a lot of people who are involved at Chilton Folk Club as well in this, which is, you know, because you're a, a major part of Children Folk Club, you know, starting the evening off every week, and I think it'll be, um, it'll just be a, a fitting tribute to the club as well, you know what I mean? That's the, that's the main inspiration and aim of doing it as well. A team as... effort, no big stars. Check. Cop is a self-styled armed detective hero as he sees himself. And uh, there's rather a lot of ego involved. And he sort of sees himself as the aces detective that ever lived. Tech Cop rolled over. Tech Cop rolled over and over and over. Never suspect. losing sight of the suspect. Shooting, Shooting first and asking, and asking questions, afterwards. questions afterwards. Okay. No, no criminal, criminal messes, messes with me, me said Tech Or else they get one of my karate death shots. Or else they get one of my karate death shots. Mysterious sort of... 
in there, yeah. and then it, it could, you could have a bit of a, maybe a bit of trumpet in the chorus, you know what right. I mean? It's got a nice little line, you know, that tick-cop, tick-cop, nobody misses with tick-cop. You know what I mean? It could be a it could be a TV thing, and then you could make it more dramatic Kojak-like as well, you know. Um, and then there's uh, Don't We Bobo. This is about the head of Spectre, a notorious spy organisation first mentioned in the novels of the late Ian Fleming. Don't we, Bobo? Said the head of Spectre. As he stroked his pet, Bulldog Bobo. He might say it more like this. Don't we, Bobo? Don't we, Bobo? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, you're right. I think I have used that intonation once before, and I'm good that this is what I want the feedback from. You know what I mean? So, don't we, Bobo? Okay. Don't we, Bobo? Said the head of Spectre as he stroked his pet bulldog. Bobo. Meanwhile, the head of the CIA, Coco, a beautiful red and blue macaw, perched on top of his cage in Urmston Pet Shop, and said, Hello! And, Show us your knickers! Yes, I can put the emphasis on the words that I, I've written, uh, with, with how I saw them as being spoken or sung. Um, so when I read them out, I can put the appropriate inflection on my voice. So when I'm when I'm singing them, um, I you can, can get your of, ideas of how to yeah, yeah. shape your words. So it won't be you know it'll be some kind of compromise. You don't some... have to slavishly copy what I do, but I, I, I can. I can give you the gist of how I intended the words to be uh, spoken out loud or sung. You okay with this one? Uh, right. I do have the original written version that you've done right. if, you, if you prefer that. Because it doesn't have to, I've just, as, as you know, obviously put it into verse chunks. Boris of the KGB. Lyrics by Brian Tibby. Music by Boss Haywood. A double agent, that flower seller. Packed secret poisoned umbrella. On a park bench reading a newspaper of the nation, the double agent wore a pink carnation. Codename Kremlin was obsessed that the double agent had confessed. To Boris of the KGB. Then he lost his liberty The machine pistol of Agent 007 Sends a foreign spy into espionage heaven They will never notice, sir It's about somebody Who went to a consultant and had hair awareness and he also had bald awareness and the need to look ten years younger. Looking the part in my brand new topper I sauntered past a uniformed copper a head of hair that was full I was assured it was undetectable Turned out to be a load of crap I should have worn a distinctive tweed cap They began to point and laugh Crane their necks like a giraffe, I drank another carafe. 
the hair at the sides It was brown, but the hairpiece was coloured plum I didn't dare dance a jig Because it was a deluxe wig Can be, and that's what we and that's what we're doing. So, um, yeah, here's to us. I'm Bossington, Bosnovich from Bosnistan. I play cool guitar when I can. Take those riffs, man, once in a while. Half a million gold pieces and shoot my the whole team. Don't take yourself too seriously and don't give up the day job. Concept album. I'm your man. I play cool. Riffs mainly because I've just thrown back from the planet ball. So basically, what will have happened? You will have recorded me your ideas of songs with about Edward Endley and the Marcus of Flixton album. A photo shoot at the zoo, perhaps. And I have had my ideas recorded. Yeah. And all that will happen is you'll probably blend the two together to come up with the final result. Then I want to record another track Hit record after hit record Back to back I think you've done a brilliant job And I'm bossing to Bosnovich from Bosnistan No, right, that, well, that is really good tempo I'm very pleased I mean, it's, it's, I think it'll go at the end, actually With it being about me I don't want it to be, you know Well, it shows you don't tone. take yourself too seriously Well, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah yeah. I think it's good for your image. <laughs> I think you're right. Dig it, boogie, dig it, man. I'm Bosnian, Bosnian from Bosnia. I tried all my life not to take myself too seriously. I'm Bosnian, Bosnian from Bosnia. Stan, dig it, man. Dig that boogie, dig it, man. I'm Bosnian, Bosnian from Bosnia. Stan, dig it, man. Dig that boogie, dig it, man. I'm Bosnian, Bosnian from Bosnia. Stan.